Today I attempt to beat Poke Rogue Classic Mode using a team of only shiny Pokemon. This is particularly difficult because in Poke Rogue each Pokemon has a point value assigned to it, and you're only allowed to bring a total of 10 points to start a run. This means unless I want to try failing out my team during the run with 1 in 2000 shiny odds, I would need to use lower value Pokemon to pad out my team. At first I started with Shiny Spearow, Bidoof, Burmy, Machop and Oddish, but after failing early on I swapped out Spearow for a Bunnelby with Pickup. So unless I miraculously find another Shiny during the playthrough, this is my team. Defensively, the team isn't too bad. Our biggest weakness is definitely flying because it's the only type two of my Pokemon are weak to that we have no resistance for. This may cause some problems later on, but in the meantime, I burn me. Your ass is getting swapped out. Bidoof is actually kind of hot, man. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> Let me clarify. Bidoof has unaware, an ability that lets the user ignore the opponent's stat changes. Later on in Poke Rogue, this can be very valuable, considering how many stat boosts the opponent get from their berries. On top of that, Bidoof has extreme speed as an egg move. 80 power stab priority move is always a good thing. All right, no super effective moves this battle. Oh yeah, it's worth mentioning that this run was done live here on my YouTube channel. For every 5 members I received, I spun a wheel. This wheel has various punishments, and our first spin got us no super effective moves in the next important battle. For this one, I just muscled my way through, clicking extreme speed, since normal isn't super effective against anything. Sick. No super effective moves? Complete. Ooh. On floor 15 we picked up the map, which allows us to dictate where we end up biome-wise. This is a very valuable item because it gives you the opportunity to steer clear of any dangerous matchups you may encounter. Not long after that though, we start experiencing some trouble. No, what the f*** are you doing here man? You're a f***ing dude, no! Just casually facing a Pokemon with 490 base that total on floor 17, no big deal. And in that moment we were gifted 5 more members, which meant we had another wheel spin to complete. You really want to see me suffer, huh? Alright. Let's have a look. Oh, shit. Before I go grab the alcohol, let's see how this Tauros battle goes. God damn it, dude. That should be super effective. Yes. God damn it, dude. Am I for real just gonna get hyped here? Damn. Come on, Bunnelby. Let's go, Bunnelby. Let's go. Off to a rough start, but I buy a revive for Bidoof and we're rewarded with a rarer candy. This takes us to our first hurdle, floor 20. No f***ing way, I've got to fight a gym leader! In Poke Rogue, you have to face gym leaders, and these gym leaders will randomly start on floor 20 or floor 30. After that, you'll continue to see them every 30 floors. In my case, we got a floor 20 gym battle against Chili. Thankfully, on the way to the first gym, I picked up two dire hits, which for five floors increases your chance of landing critical hits by one stage. These dire hits stack and gives us two stages of crit chance. And as of generation six, that means we have a 50% chance of landing a critical hit. Critical hit! Fuck. Never mind. Ran out of PP. Critical hit. Nice. W! I believe that this single handedly saved my run. The extra power from the critical hits allowed my wounded team to deal enough damage to claim victory. Alright. I'll be back in a moment, let me go to the alcohol. While I run downstairs to grab alcohol and make good on the wheel spin, more members of the community gifted memberships, which meant we had to do two more wheel spins. NZ, you rat bastard. Thank you for the gifties. Here is drinking alcohol for money. Smells so bad, dude. <laughs> it's miserable. It's miserable. What else do we have? Thankfully for the run, they landed on taking another shot and chat making a tweet for my Twitter account. Feels like I'm drinking f***ing gasoline, dude. You guys are actually like number three. All right, whatever. We can tweet that one out. Our next rival battle is on floor 25, to which we bring our newly evolved Babaro. Uh, I don't know if we're ready for this, to be honest. This rival fight is infamous for ending runs, because more often than not, you'll be showing up under leveled, and the rival can get some pretty insane Pokemon at times. Okay, sand point. I wish Burmy wasn't just fodder right now. Oh, never mind. it has protect. Silly me. Bruh. Ow. Yeah, no, this is Jover. This is Jover. 
Never mind, just show over for him. Alright. Ow. Ow. Double kick? Yum. Alright, Bavaral. It's all on you, my goat. Please. Let's go. Oof. After yet another an hour of victory, I heal up my team the best I can to take on the next five floors. Which thankfully didn't give us any more issues. My strategy in the meantime was to overlevel the best I could with Bavaral. At least until the rest of my party became more usable. Floor 50 was our second gym battle, this time against Berg. Ah, sh Despite the huge level difference, Wormadam took care of things. Ow. During this battle, we gained another five members, and chat got to make another tweet from my Twitter account. Dude, I... There's, there's nothing I hate more than when people make a tweet, and they end the tweet with, with that's the tweet. I genuinely, like, it, it, it frustrates me to no end. That's it, that's the tweet. Yes, I can f***ing see that! All right, there you go, I tweeted it out. On floor 55, we have our third rival battle. All right. All right. A Dweepy! Oh my god, I didn't, shoot, didn't expect a one-shot Dweepy, Jesus. Why do you have that bird now, man? Why are you doing this to me? How f***ing dare you? Do you, do you, do you, can you not? Let's go. Corviknight gave me some trouble, but besides that, we got another victory under our belt. On floor 70, we finally found the Link Cable and evolved our Machoke into Machamp, leaving Gloom as the final Pokemon to evolve on the team. Going into this run, I fully intended on picking up Vileplume. This is because I had success using one in the past, and because Vileplume is part poison type, meaning it takes neutral damage to Eternatus's Sludge Bombs and Cross Poisons, compared to Blossom, which is weak to it. Speaking of poison, floor 80 was a battle against Roxy. Never mind, I was mistaken. I thought we were not in a gym fight yet. We, I was wrong, I was wrong. Quiverdance, Werberdam took out most of our team, and Diggersby cleaned up with an earthquake. Rolling up to floor 91, and we finally got a sunstone. Despite preferring Vileplume, I'm reminded that Blossom has access to Quiverdance, which was enough to convince me to go for it. Not to mention, it definitely has the better shiny. With everyone fully evolved, all that was left to do was to find another shiny, or find a Dynamax band and get Gigantamax Machamp. In the meantime, we take on the fourth rival battle on floor 95. This is the first battle where Wormadam really shows its value. So I lead Bavaral and because I see a Cinderace in front of me, I go for Waterfall as Ivy switches into Dragapult to resist the hit. I go into Wormadam, take a Dragon Rush like no problem at all, and then go for Quiver Dance to try and get set up, but then Ivy sends in Corviknight. I discovered that Diggersby with Super Fang is my best answer to Corviknight, so I just go in and spam a few Super Fangs. After that, I send in Wormadam to clean up, but Ivy has other plans and switches into Cinderace. I then switch Swarmadam out to sack off Diggersby, to which I get a clean switch into the barrel. Going for another waterfall, Ivy swaps into Dragapult again, which opts to use Double Edge, doing some recoil to itself, which prompts me to go for another waterfall to try and take it out, but we don't manage to get there. Double Edge my worm, bro. Pause. I then swap into Wormadam to resist the incoming hit, and I figure I may as well just fire off a bug buzz because Cinderace is probably coming in. I then swap to Machamp, as Cinderace uses Bounce. I go back into Wormadam to take the Bounce, and then I figure that Cinderace might not even have any fire type moves at this point, so I get a recover off for mostly free, and then I swap back to Barrel. I go for another Waterfall, which takes out the Dragapult, and on the switch into Slacking, I decide to swap to Wormadam to take any incoming hits. Ivy swaps back to Cinderace, as I Quiver Dance. Interesting. Do you even have a fire move? I don't think this guy has a fire move. And since I know she probably doesn't have any fire moves, I use this as an opportunity to set up and sweep the rest of the team with Wormadam. After beating Ivy, nothing of note happened until floor 110 where we face Kofu. Okay! I'm not battled this guy yet, I don't think. Thankfully, we have a Quiver Dance and Grass type, so we made quick work of his team. Crazy battle. GG's. Then we were gifted another 5 members, and this time I had to put on a maid dress for 30 minutes. Despite being a bit cold, at least it didn't affect my gameplay. The next 20 floors are typical Pokeroll gameplay, and on floor 140, we face Melanie. Which results in another Wormadam sweep. 
Floor 143 gives us the Dynamax Band, meaning we have a chance of Gigantamaxing the champ. Then we arrive at the long-awaited Floor 145. Wish me luck, chat. This could be where the run ends. I'm gonna be honest. But hey, we had a good time, right? It's got the last resort bug. Nope, no it doesn't. It's got double edge. We actually got a fire time move for me this time. I mean, I won't complain. Nice. There's Big Man himself. Wait, did they give him an herb? All right. Miss. Damn it. Oh, damn it. I thought I could recover. Yeah, Wormadam is, uh... Oh, wait, what? I'll take it. Yeah, I was gonna say... I don't think that's intended. If I can beat 145 with this, you have no excuse! Going into this run, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to win at all. But after beating the fifth rival battle, I had all the confidence in the world that we could go all the way. 195? I can do it. 10 more members meant we got two more wheel spins. This time stopping us from switching out during the boss battle on floor 160 and doing the gym leader on floor 170 blindfolded. Thankfully, Wormadam was already set up to take out the boss on floor 160 without much trouble. Now I have to beat our final gym leader on floor 170 blindfolded. That's progly. Okay. Dead cat. Okay. Sensino. Nice. Uh, big dog. The. Oof, oof. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, fucking Stoutland. For it. Is that like... Is that like a bird? I feel like that's unpheasant. No, it's not. Wait, no, no, no. I know what that is. That's not unpheasant. It's a normal type, obviously. What the fuck is that? Oh, wait, that's Watchog. That's Watchog. And that's Greedent. <sighs> GG. Floor 172 gives us the Terra Orb. Crystallizing in this game lasts for 10 floors. And the Terra Crystals you find are completely random. But under the right circumstances, this can be a very valuable item. We've reached the final stretch of the game. Between Floor 180 and Floor 190, we have to face 4 Elite 4 members and 1 Champion. This guy again? Okay. This might be cooked. This might be this might be Jover. I fight this guy all the time, dude. I literally fight Blueberry Academy like like it's my job. Oh, 
always on on these guys' ass, man. Always. Never mind, I'm built different. All right, let's give it. Hello. That's gonna f hurt. Nope, no, it doesn't. Oh, well, it might. Might eventually. Yeah, it's starting to hurt. What do you have for a well-trained worm? Crazy worm, madam. It's time. Okay. Thank you, Dark Charizard. Have a good one, man. good performance from Urbidam, all things considered. I don't know if I ever battled Kieran, I forget. Oh, this is a pain in the ass. Oh, never mind. Unlucky start for me. Interesting. Don't talk to me on my Wormadon ever again. Don't talk to us. Do not talk to me. Sam, you might have to look at Wormadon. It might be a level 2 mon. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Kind of a crazy mon to me. I hope if this video can teach you anything, it's that you should not underestimate Wormadam. Always Leon, dude. This fucking guy, dude. Ow. Are you serious? Fair enough. Okay. Oh, there's Pult. Could have saw that one coming. Oh, I didn't even realize we're fighting a Zacian right now. I did not even realize. I did. I was, dude. I was literally just pressing A. <laughs> All that stands in our way now is one final rival fight and Eternatus. 
Beyond Floor 190, we can't catch any new team members. However, Floor 192 gave us the Terra Fairy Crystal. After much consideration, I gave it to Blossom. I might regret this, but... Then Floor 193 blessed us with one final upgrade. The candy jar is a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. I thought the day would never come. Against the odds, my five mon team of misfits made it to the end game. Despite how this next battle goes, I couldn't be more proud. I really wonder what this thing's moves are. Does it actually have good moves now or no? Double edge? Ow. It was a default. That should be fine. He's he's still bouncing. He's still just using bounce, bro. He's got me convinced there's no fire move. What's up, Shagger? Ow, that hurt, dude. There is different types of shinies in this game. This is a this is a rare shiny Rayquaza. Yes. Womp womp. Womp womp. Oh, uh, Wormadam's gonna fall. Thank you for your service, Wormadam. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Pikachu. We somehow left that battle even less unscathed than we did on floor 145. Now that all the rival battles are behind us, all that remains is Eternatus. I took the opportunity on the final climb up there to pick up as many X items as I could. And then, five more gifted members. Meaning, I had to spin the wheel one more time for our final fight against Eternatus. Bruh. Yeah, there's just no way I win. <laughs> there's no way I win then if I can't use super effective attacks. Well, actually... Hmm... Yeah, well, I wanted to use Mud Slap with, uh, with Diggersby, so it might still be okay. Let's try our best. I didn't mention it before, but the reason I decided to terrestrialize my Blossom into a Fairy type was so I could do this strategy where I swap between a Fairy type and a Steel type against the first form of Eternatus. This Eternatus only has a Dragon move and a Poison move, and the Dragon move only has 5 PP. It also forces the Eternatus to recharge after every use. Swapping back and forth like this allows us to get into the final Eternatus fight without taking any damage. It's also worth noting that I memory mushroomed Infestation on my Wormadam for this fight. Infestation is a move that does residual damage, which just so happens to do a lot of damage to bosses in Poke Rogue. That does so much damage, dude. Okay! Now, what does it do here? <laughs> I figured it would cost poison, I had a feeling. Let's go leprechaun. 
You also may have noticed I started using struggle bug instead of bug buzz. This was deliberately for Eternatus because it constantly drops special attack. It's fine. Why did I do so much though? Oh my god, dude. Do you mind? <sighs> Despite everything, we came out on top. It goes without saying that this is my favorite run that I've ever done. If you want to watch the full thing or any of the other runs we do on stream, I've left a playlist in the description jam-packed full of PokeRoad content. If you made it this far, please let everyone know in the comments by leaving a pink heart emoji for Wormadam. Thanks for watching.